All right, everybody, good morning. It's good to be back, see people again. Thank you for your prayers. It's been one of those times. Um, so before we get to my presentation, um, and it just blew my mind when I heard Stan talking about this and him just summarizing and closing everything up. It, you'll see why. <laughs> Uh, but first, before we do that, I wanted to share something with you, and I didn't have time to, to bring anything or place it in, the, in any of the slides, but I thought this was really interesting, kind of disturbing, but I don't know if you've heard of it, and if not, here you go. So there is a new eco Bible. Have you heard of it? No? So it gives ethical green, it's an ethical green compass to the woke generation. Pretty much, that's what it is. So it, it talks about, um, it uses a, a Exodus, a Genesis, to explain how we as humans have failed the earth and um, that we are destroying Mother Earth and that we should be better stewards and take care of Mother Earth. Basically, and they're using the Bi they're using the Bible again, Genesis, Exodus, to tell us that, to preach about that, and how we can redeem ourselves. Think think of that, redeem ourselves to, to take care of that. Exactly, exactly, and that's what I I talked about not too long ago. What you know, the COP twenty seven, I think, um, that we that I spoke about not too long ago, but. It's it's crazy. I mean, and the, the weird part about it is that um, the two authors are Jewish. They're rabbis. And it's crazy. I mean, it, it just it'll blow your mind. If you have some time to look at it, go ahead. It's just it's called, again, the Eco Bible, volume one, the ecological commentary on Genesis and Exodus. But it's basically just telling you what we've done wrong. Right. Mm, yeah, right. I don't think so. Um, so if you have time, go check that out. It's going to blow your mind. It's crazy. And then another quick thing. Um, this is actually from a doctor. His name is Dr. Malone, and he's very well known um, in, in medicine and science. And anyway, he uh, wrote an article that this is the title mRNA vaccines and livestock and companion animals are here now. So basically what they're doing now um, is they're going to inject whatever they want to inject, including mRNA, into produce, into livestock, into anything. Yeah, no, don't eat anything at this point. Like, eat air, you know? I mean, pretty much, or it's crazy. Your grow your own veggies as, you know, as long as you can. You know, if you can, with weather going crazy and, you know, I don't, I don't know. So grow, uh, grow um, vegetables or sprouts inside your home. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Can we throw away so much of the, 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 the compost stuff, you know, the organic stuff? Yeah, I, need to, I think we need to look into creating something organic for the for gardening. Yeah, I don't have a green thumb. My mother did. I, I don't. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. But anyway, I thought if you want to check that out, it's very interesting as well. Um, so today, uh, the presentation, really quick, very simple to the point. Sleepwalking, pretty much wake up, right? So. And this came to mind um, not too long ago. I overheard a Christian conversation, right? Two people. One person 
strong in their convictions and faith, uh, knew who they were in Jesus from what I heard. The other person, second person, was also convicted in their faith or beliefs. Um, however, I stopped and thought about this later. The words that this person used to describe how they were able, how, how, how they saw Jesus or what they understood Jesus to be were a, a bit lukewarm, in my humble opinion, and they lacked, again, in my opinion, they lacked full recognition of who Jesus is, in my opinion. The second person said that we should be followers, and in order for us to be followers, we had to be, of course, servants and good stewards and kind, generous and non non-judgmental, which is fine, right? We, we should be that. But is that all that we're created to do or to be? I mean, is that what Jesus tells us to do? That that's it. Like that's just your your role. And that should be your characteristics as a Christian or not, not even a God fearing person, a Jesus believer, a true believer. That's all you're supposed to do. Just go along to get along. Just don't cause any waves. Just be gracious and not non judgmental and just go under the radar. And that's it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, exactly. Even. Even when other people don't agree with you. Right? Because let's really take a look at who Jesus was and is. And let's take a look at what he did here. Right? Let's remember what he did here. He was a revolutionary here. Right? So... The picture of Jesus as a helpless little baby in a manger comes to mind. The way this person was describing who we're supposed to be as Christians, as Jesus followers. OK, that picture came to mind. And also, again, the picture of Jesus on him on the cross as a, as a dead man. That's it. That's that's what her pretty much. Conversation with this other person, the second person, it, it very Meek, yes, very humble, but that's it. That's your entire existence in Jesus. That's all you are, right? But in my opinion, what's next? What happens afterwards? Where is that picture, right? They haven't shown us a picture. So I, I'm talking about this example because it points to very different pictures of Christians today. One person seemed to understand or well understood who Jesus is and how we should be in Jesus because of Jesus, through Jesus. The other person, even though they did have, you know, a, a good understanding of, you know, certain characteristics that a God fearing person should be like, you know, I think the second person lacks understanding or full understanding about what Jesus is, who he is what he did, what he means. And so that's where we run into trouble, right? So, um, and I'm just gonna throw this out there because this is what we're, I'm going to talk about, sleepwalking through life, okay? And I'm going to share a little bit of, of what my understanding and what I've gone through. So we used to live in Minnesota. My family and I moved back here uh, 2017. And two months after we came back, my mom died. So I didn't have time, much time to be with her or to, you know, uh, anyway. So that was a shock. She went in for just a typical, you know, uh, doctor visit one day. And all of a sudden, the doctor told her, you have to go to the hospital immediately. OK, she goes. She never comes back. She never comes out. I never saw her again. My husband and I actually, as soon as they told us that mom was in the hospital, we immediately went to the hospital. I told my employer, you know, I'll be back. I just want to go see her, make sure. Everything. 
and Chance and I went to the hospital and we missed her by like five minutes because they said, oh, she was in, the, in this room, but we moved her to the third floor. So we go and we're running and we're going and we get there and I meet my father. And he's like, you just missed her two minutes ago. What? I think that something's off. OK, the, the time, five minutes, two minutes, whatever it was off. But I just missed her and I never saw her alive again. OK. Then two years after my mom dies. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry. Um, it was like three years. Um, January 1st. My brother dies. So as everybody is, you know, celebrating the new year, that evening, um, they're just unplugging all the machines and he passes away. And I never got to see him. It was during the whole COVID thing, the start of it and uh, not the start, but at, like maybe a year right into it, dear. And so it was a big, you know, and then he had MRSA. And so I, I never saw him. And they took him from the hospital to the cremation uh, building. And that's it. So I never saw him. OK, so grief. Yeah, grief is real. Yeah, it happens. Life happens, right? Death happens. We just spoke about it. Um. Now, this is what's going on. So. My sister. Um, has an anger. Towards what happened. Towards what happened to her and her life and towards. God. And what happened the way mom died, the way my brother died. And other things that happened. And she's still living in that grief with that grief and that anger and that resentment towards God. My dad. He's still living in grief. Even though his lifestyle choices and his actions. Don't necessarily support him being a grieving man of. Wow, you really loved your wife. Well, no, he has an online girlfriend. Long story there. I'm not going to go into it more than that. But. I do see that he's living in that grief. He's very dark. He doesn't want to do anything. Guys, he doesn't want to live. There is no life there. There is no light there. And he's always telling me, you know, we have to be a family. We have to pray. We have to, you know, let, you know, God, you know, is with us. God, God will. And I'm thinking to myself, why do you keep saying that when you don't believe it? <coughs> why? <coughs> but. I do know that. He is grieving in his own way. Now, I know that everybody here has experienced some some sort of grief, right? We've all lost people. So <clears throat> where do you fit in? And you can ask me, well, Cynthia, where do you fit in? And I can tell you that I'm still sad. Obviously, I know that I lost my mom. I lost my brother. I never saw them in the situation, the way everything turned out. I didn't have time to go, you know, and sit with them and, you know, just all, you know, cry. And no, let's go. Come on. Boots up. Let's go. It is what it is. That's life. Death happens. We just talked about it. Why? So in my mind. I did cry and I sometimes I remember my mom and I do cry or I remember my brother and I do cry. I love them. I miss them. But I haven't stopped living. In fact, I know. That they're no longer in pain. All right, I'm in I'm in pain. <laughs> I'm here in this body. I get sick. I have issues that I have to deal with. I'm in pain. They're no longer in pain. 
Stan just finished talking about that. So I'm in that maybe, I don't know what the percentage, maybe 1%, 2% of people that have a little bit more of an understanding to at least acknowledge who or what happens after death. And I praise God that I'm here with everybody here, with this church, that Pastor Joe is my pastor, that I have Stan as um, a leader here in this church, Bible study teacher. And that's, you see, when he was, he was, when Stan was up here, I realized something, something hit me. I've heard, we all heard about the word, the remnant, right? And we all think remnant, okay, people who survive, people who, but it's really people who survive because they know the word of God. It's not because they're preppers or they have a house or they have a farm or they, that will definitely help, of course. But it's people who understand the word of God. It's people who understand who Jesus is and why he is. It's people who understand the gift of resurrection. It's people who understand life after death. It's people who understand that life does not end after the physical death. So, can you see, Sam? Oh, there we go. Thank you. So let's look at this. So today's church often, if not all of the time, helps perpetuate the view that the secular world wants them to proclaim Jesus to be. And we've accepted that. We've been taught that. Again, the baby in the manger and the dead man on the cross. So we have been programmed to see the Jesus as the Lamb of God, which he is. And without the Lamb, we would have all been damned to hell. Right? We have been instructed to see Jesus, the King of Kings, as a baby in Mary's arms or on a cross as a crucified man. We've bought so much into these two images that Mary has been elevated to God status and the cross has become a symbol of Christendom. So the cross where he died is the symbol of Christianity. And we've all bought into it at some time or another. That's what's happened. Again, here's that image. We've seen it everywhere and we'll continue to see it because that's what the media, that's what the world, that's what the society wants us to know and believe about Jesus. That's it. That's who he was. And this is who he was too. Jesus crucified. What else though? What happens next? I, I want to know. So let's look at John 12, 46. Um, I'm sorry. John, yeah. John 12, 46. This is from the New International Version. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. So why do people seem to prefer to live in darkness and dysfunction? Are you comfortable in your own dysfunction? Happy and safe in your grief and your sadness? Let's look at John 8:12, the New International Version. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. Gosh, he just told you. That's what Stan was just talking about. He's trying to make you understand. Look, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's what he's telling you. That's what he's telling. He's telling you who he is and why you are. And you will keep living even after your physical body dies. Okay. Um, I have a book about King David. And it talks about his life all throughout, you know, what happened to him, who his family was what he did, Goliath, the whole thing, his kingdom. And then it gets into his kids. Let's not go there right now. Let's, let's stay away from his kids. But let's focus on David, King David. So 
Remember, the key of knowledge that David spoke of? Do you recall that? I don't think I put it in here, but if you can, go to Luke eleven fifty two. 52. Woe to you experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who are entering. See, we've been taught wrong. We've been taught that Jesus was just a baby and then a crucified man. Yes, he resurrected, but that's it. There's no nothing. We've been taught to see Jesus like that. And they, you know, what this verse here is saying, Luke, he's, he's talking about how Jesus is accusing the teachers of that day. He's telling them, you are selling them a bag of coarse manure, pretty much. All right, because you're not teaching them. You're not giving them that key. You're stealing their light. You're stealing the light, the truth from them. So whenever we, right now, we've been programmed to say, okay, life ends at death. But just like Dan, uh, Stan just ex is explained, life, eternal life, it's a continuation. Life never stops if you are a true believer, a God-fearing believer. If you have this knowledge, a true understanding of who Jesus is, why he is and who we are in him. If you have that key of knowledge, he is a key of knowledge. If you understand that, you understand why death is nothing. But you have been programmed, why? So that you can pay for a very expensive funeral, so that you can be taxed to death, so that you can be comfortable in your dysfunction. So that every time their birthday or an anniversary or every day of your life, you're grieving forever. And you're not giving honor and glory to Christ because you don't understand what Christ is, who he is and who we are through him. You are miserable. You are poor. You are blind. Because you have given in to deception and delusion, but. It all started with the teachers, with the with the people back then, right? The experts in the law. Woe to you experts in the law, because you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves have not entered and you have hindered those who were entering. That's what they've done to us. That's why we're still wondering, oh, my gosh, what happens after death? Oh, my gosh. Oh, we go straight to hell. Oh, we go straight to heaven. Oh, my goodness. It's so, oh, I'm so scared to die. That's why we are so dumbed down. And you know what? I've heard Stan give these Bible studies for quite a while now. I think we all have. And I've learned so much from him. But I heard him say once, I don't know who told him this, that he couldn't be doing that because he hasn't studied. Studied what? Deception? <clears throat> Rules made up by someone who decided that people should believe in this and say this? What is that? That's crazy. That is crazy. I heard this from, uh, oh my gosh, Steve Quell the other day. He said, people are dumb to death. Dumb unto death. People are dumb unto death. <laughs> well, who is teaching them? Who told them? Who deceived them? That's not with our pastor, though. I got to make that disclaimer. <laughs> because they broke the mold when they made him. He's never been the type to tell us, you know, no, you can't. You can't go up there. You can't give a presentation. Nope. You can't pray over us. Nope. You can't sing with us. You can't pray with us. You can't give a presentation. You can't give a special. You can't. No, only me because I have a degree and I have a certificate that allows me to preach and teach. That is evil. Anybody that says that is evil. I'm sorry. That's my opinion. So resurrection, what does it mean to you? Romans 
1312, the international version. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. I keep on um, talking about the full armor of God. This is part of it. This is part of it. Jesus is the armor of God. And if you know Jesus, you know who you are in Jesus. And you know that death is not the end of you. You know that death is just a transformation. It's just, a, you know, something that happens. You got to go through it to get to the next level. That's what it is. But, you know, I also ran into this and I, I have to say it. I have to say it. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so what has happened is, again, my opinion, what I'm what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking of is that we've become so intellectually involved in discussing the Bible that our intellect has actually hindered us from understanding the Bible. Does that make sense? Our, our intelligence, our human intelligence has stopped our spiritual growth. It has hindered our spiritual wisdom. And since we never, never asked, since, since this generation never asks for God's discernment, for God to grant them wise discernment, they're dumb unto death. Pretty much. Yeah, you can't learn the Bible through intelligence. It has to be wisdom or spiritual knowledge that only God can offer. Exactly. exactly, if you ask for it. But what have you been taught? Uh, no, let's go to Christmas. Let's go to service on Christmas. You know, let's go to service on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. And we're going to sing a few little hymns and we're going to, you know, do the cross if you're Catholic, you know, whatever. And go up and down. Yeah, sit down, stand up, kneel, stand up. That's, that's pretty much what you do and you're good to go for another year. Let's fall asleep. Exactly. My father fell asleep every Sunday. <laughs> 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 That's right. That's right. That's what that's what helps them cope. Yeah. No, from church way back when before, you know, Catholic church. Yep, you confess your sins. Yep. Go confess your sins on Sunday and start sitting again on Monday. So, resurrection. Let's look at the definition from Webster's Dictionary. Arising again, chiefly, the revival of the dead of the human race or their return from the grave, particularly at the general judgment. This sounds like zombies. Yeah. That's what it, right? It sounds like zombies. It, it really does. Michael Jackson, you know how they do this. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's exactly what this definition is describing. I'm sorry. It, it has nothing. It doesn't talk about Jesus. It doesn't talk about the meaning. It, it just talks about life, okay? It talks about being mortal. It talks about your body de decomposing or not decomposing, coming back to reanimated zombies. That's what it is. That's what it talks about. Nothing else. Pure and simple. And this is what people look at. They they get this definition. New kid, you know, kids growing up getting this definition. They're like, oh, so when you die, that's it. There's nothing else. So the Bible is just a story. Jesus is not real. Right? So resurrection means life, eternal life for who? For you and me, for the remnant, for God-fearing, the true God-fearing people of God. 
Jesus' resurrection means true God-fearing believers will resurrect and will live an eternal life. Do you know what that means? We should after sand study. Do you really know what that means? I think we know. I think we should. Let's look at Matthew 22, 29 through 32. Jesus replied, you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. I mean, how much simpler can it get? Like, honestly, what is wrong with you? He is the God of the living, not the dead. He is your God right now. And he is your God once you, once you pass. He is with you always until the end of the world, until the end of the age. He's with you always. So why are you afraid? Jesus never said that, that everybody, uh, only the people that are running around here uh, that he loves and the dead ones are gone, because that's what some people believe, that, that he's not the God, the God of the dead. But then on the other hand, he says, they're just asleep. Mm -hmm. A person mm -hmm. asleep has a life in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And remember, I want you to understand this. Jesus did not say that men should worship God through their intellect. He never said that. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they said this. These these teachers these holy men these lawyers at that time exactly they're the ones who defined it jesus never said that god never said that think about that i want you to really think about these things that's the only way that you will understand who you are through jesus because of him and you will have a better understanding of your relationship with him it's very simple. Daniel 12, 2. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, will awaken. Some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Isn't that clear? I mean, that's pretty simple to understand, especially after Stan's Bible study. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have a question about that? I mean, I really, I want you to get this. I don't want people to live in their dysfunction. Right now, my father, my sister are, live, are living and they're comfortable living in their dysfunction. They don't have light. They don't have life right now. And it's hard for me to see that. It's hard for me to know what's happening and what will happen if they don't wake up. But like Pastor Joe has said, sometimes people in your family, they won't listen to you. Why would they listen to you? Why would your father or mother listen to you? They're your father, they're your mother. Your siblings remember you as, you know, whatever you used to be to them. That's it, you haven't evolved in their eyes. You haven't grown, much less spiritually. And it's the minions of the adversaries that keep them there, right? Because even the people that they hang out with, the people who they know they, know they associate with, believe the same thing, like my family. the same delusion, <clears throat> the blind leading the blind, straight to damnation. That's it, that's what it is. What else can I call it? I'm not gonna soften it up because they're my family. So wake up. Stop sleepwalking because that's what you're doing. Stop sleepwalking through this life. Stop living the life Satan wants you to live. Live your life with purpose. 
And no, no, let's not go to the purpose driven church or no, 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 no. That's that's delusion itself. That's lies. Okay, forget about that. Living life with purpose is knowing Jesus. Finish the Great Commission, people. That's your one job. That's your one job. You have one job. Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. Finish the race. End it strong. That's pretty much all you have to do. And if people are people just aren't good at like going and preaching and converting, you can live a godly life. There was I was reading this interview with this person that said, live your life around other people because you may be the only Bible they read. Mm -hmm. In other words, being around you may be their their exposure to the Bible and a Christian. So even if you're not some great preacher, live your life so people see how you live. And while you're living your life, if you hear a little still voice in your head saying, go to that person, pray for them, pray over them, give them your testimony, share your testimony about what happened to you. Share your testimony about Jesus. Do it. That is, yeah, you're, you're not going to be a preacher teacher there either, but you're going to be finishing your race. You're going to be doing your one job, a great commission. So anyway, that is my presentation. Um, it, it just blew my mind when I just, I, when Stan giving that, uh, oh my gosh, I'm like, yes, God, you have a sense of humor. I know. <laughs> you make things work together for those who love you, who know you. Thank you very much. Well, let me throw in something. Uh, Alex and I have an uncle that's a Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. he, every time we, we go often or visit him, he wants us to come to convert us, you know. But it says here that Jehovah's Witnesses believe that when a person dies, they cease to exist. And this is because the Bible makes it clear that human beings do not have an immortal soul that survives when the body dies. It's, it makes you wonder, what, then what are you, what's it about then? What are you, what, what's your why motivation? You know? Why do you bother then? Mm -hmm. Wow. Again, you know, um, people are trying to make sense of everything, every word. They're trying to make sense. But remember, he desires for us to go beyond human intellect. The kingdom of God is not going to be found in your human intellect. If you're going that route, you're going the wrong way. Turn back. Make a U-turn. Go back. But yeah, I get it. All right. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful Sabbath. Thank you for the messages this morning. Thank you for allowing us to gather one more time and enjoying each other's fellowship and company and for coming together and truly trying to understand your word without that human intellect getting in the way, but really looking towards our spiritual wise discernment given to you, given to us by you. Please bless the food that we're about to consume. May it be good nourishment for our bodies and our souls. Please be with us throughout the rest of our days and th throughout the rest of our journeys. And thank you, Father God, for your love, your blessings poured upon your people. Please accept our prayers. Know that we need you. And please grant us, keep on granting us, wise discernment. And Jesus, Powerful, precious, and holy name we pray. Amen.